And this afternoon, Finance Minister Ken Overeta is in hot waters. The Commission for Human Rights and Administrative Justice, Shrad, says it has received an official complaint from the Tiger IPI team and private investigator Nazarimi announced on a conflict of interest situation involving Finance Minister Ken Ofereata and a former Minister of State, Charles Edubahing. As you know, uh, Mr. Edubahing has been dismissed for alleged influence peddling and using his name and the name of the Vice President uh, to receive bribes from investors in an investigative piece by uh, the investigative journalist Anasa Remio Anas. He has denied the allegation but says he will cooperate with the state investigative authorities to prove his innocence. My colleague uh, Kwiko Sante has been monitoring this uh, latest from the investigative journalist, joins us uh, via Zoom. So Kwiko, let's start off. Uh, from this uh, latest that we're uh, seeing from Anas Aremio and Nas, uh, what grounds do we know? Uh, coming, that, what grounds do we are we learning of as as being the claims for which uh, Tiger IPI wants Shrouch to investigate the finance minister? So, Bryce, we know that the minister has been dogged with conflict of interest allegations. Indeed, it forms part of the grounds that the minority have filed seeking to remove the minister from office. Of course, the committee is now, I mean, taking out that option because lawyers for the finance minister have argued that conflict of interest matters is just in the sole purview of the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice, Shraj. And so they want them to look into those matters. But we know now of this new petition from Shraj bordering on these two individuals who have come under intense pressure. Already, Charles Edubahin is gone and the minister is still fighting for his job. But the specific grounds we are here to get an inkling in terms of what exactly announced the evidence he has been adducing to restrict in terms of working on this. We know that when it comes to um, 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 Charles Edubahin, it has to do with a, a number of his companies, particularly the Black Star Company, which has been receiving commissions for government bonds, government loans, and other such instruments. It is also similar for the finance minister, Ken Furiata, whose bank, Data Bank get some job and other commissions in terms of government borrowing. So these two ministers will have to be answering these questions to Shraj. Just like I told you early on, lawyers for the minister said it's only up to Shraj to investigate these matters. And now Shraj is going to do so. Yeah. We've had a conversation with um, Mr. Wetal, who is the head of Shraj, who has been confirming receiving this um, petition. Uh, but, but here's the thing. Uh, just um, a couple of days before the airing of Galancy Economy, uh, which is the latest piece by Anas Sarimi Anas, uh, we've seen uh, excerpts of a transcript of what was supposed to be aired. Portions we know uh, relate to the finance minister. Could that be part of the reasons for which we're seeing this action uh, by uh, the it, investigative team? Indeed, the, the information we have is that something of that sort is going to happen. If you look at the video itself, the finance minister, Ken Furiata, isn't implicated anywhere. Of course, Charles Edubahin is the centerpiece of that investigation, and he is involved. He is said to allegedly be demanding about 20% of a 500 million investment package for a bank in Ghana. So that aspect is being dealt with currently. But in terms of finance minister, in terms of the entire gamut of evidence that the investigative team is presenting, we do not know if there are any other details outside of this video that NASA has already published. And so we'll be waiting to see the full particulars unfold as Shrike. But Shrike says they are very much ready to roll the, uh, the investigations and get straight to the bottom of it. Uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, there's a lot happening in terms of what we're expecting in Parliament tomorrow. The eight-member ad hoc committee that was set up by the Speaker to look into claims uh, of uh, a vote of censure against the Finance Minister. He's presented his side of the story, and we're expecting that that report to be laid before the House. Uh, do we know, as of now, if that work has been completed? So information we are having is that the committee will be writing to the Speaker to seek an extension of time. Or uh, um, indeed, their work, the seven day that the speaker gave them expired last week. And so as of last week, their job was done. Last Friday, they had to present their report to parliament. They could not do so. Our understanding is that between the weekend and now, the committee have been seeking to get an extension from the speaker of parliament. Indeed, there are also some understanding that as early as tomorrow, the report will be laid and MPs will be expected to vote on it. 
Never mind that on Wednesday or on Thursday, the budget is expected to be presented. And it is not clear the finance minister will be doing so himself because already 98 NDP and PC, they don't want him to do that. If he loses the foot of censure, the president may dismiss him. And so there's that kind of uncertainty hanging around the neck of the minister ahead of the presentation of the budget, either this Thursday or Wednesday, whichever the leadership of parliament I mean, agrees with. Yeah, so, so we know that there's uh, indeed the readiness on the part of some 98 NPP MPs to kick Finance Minister Ken Oforeta out. In fact, they are threatening that if indeed the Finance Minister appears uh, to present the budget, they, they may not cooperate with him. But what else do we know about that conversation uh, that took place uh, on the Super Morning Show earlier today? So and you've been hearing from Andy Apia, who is the MP for Asante Hashim North, and he has been going into the specific details. You know, that interview there that I had with the finance minister asking specifically the head about these claims of the, of the NDP MPs. First, let's hear what the minister said about whether or not he has heard these MPs. Then we'll go into what Andy Apia could be okay. telling Okay, uh, it's a good time to listen to Ken Oferreta. Well, uh, hearing is not compulsory. I give him the benefit of uh, decision whether or not he's heard. But we are also resolute in our approach. And... Uh, well, if he hasn't heard, maybe in the course of time he'll hear. Mm. Oh, okay, uh, but, but Kweku, here's uh, the leader, and we need to be clear, uh, of the group of 98. Uh, well, I'm, I don't want to say he's the leader because uh, we're not sure what the position of the majority leader is. It, it appears, he says, it's only a few MPs who are not in support. So the entirety of the majority has an issue with, with this. And here's we uh, echoed what the position of that group is, which means they will not cooperate with him going forward. Exactly. And the majority leader says that this is a position that now belongs to the entirety of the NPP majority group in parliament. They are the ones making this demand now. We heard of their meeting they had with the president where they acceded to the president's request to stand down this demand until the budget is read and until the IMF talks are concluded. They've now gone back from that word. They say they want a minister out immediately. And from what Andy Apia Kubi, who is the spokesperson for the group, is saying, if the minister appears in parliament on Thursday, there will be some form of embarrassment for him because they are not backing down on their demands. Mm. Santi, parliamentary correspondent, will be on the lookout uh, as your report on the latest tomorrow. Uh, well, let's bring in Adam Senan, who is co-chair of the Citizens Movement Against Corruption. Uh, he's joining us uh, via phone now. Uh, good afternoon to you, sir. Thank you for your time. Uh, so what do you make of this latest from uh, Anas Arimi Awanas? I didn't clearly hear the latest incident. Uh, maybe perhaps you want to recap? Yeah, I was just asking about the latest uh, we're, we're receiving from Tiger IPI and the petition against uh, the, the finance minister to Shraj. Well, I mean, I think one of the unique things about uh, the work being done by NAS is typically the, it's a policy advocacy approach where they, they tend to try and engage responsible parties to do something about their work. Um, and I think that's the way to go. So I'm delighted it's not just been left at the state of uh, we have produced a film, a documentary, um, but they're also looking out for the state agencies that ought to act on the information and take necessary action. So, um, yes, we are happy to note that there are further actions that are being taken. Uh, and, uh, of course, many of the opinion that why not wait uh, for the parliamentary processes to be complete before the Tiger Eye team goes ahead with this. Uh, is that a big deal? No, it's not an issue. I mean, um, as we are wont to point out in, in governance, uh, in many other jurisdictions, you have a multiplicity of agencies investigating the same issue and drawing conclusions. What that does... It, has, it ensures that no single group can then say we have the final position um, and you can then compare the conclusions of different agencies and see whether these are aligned with the law. And don't forget that these agencies tend to approach the same issue from different angles. So someone could look at it from a civil issue, someone can look at it as a criminal issue, somebody can look at it in terms of the social norms and practices. So. Uh, I think it is, it is in order for other groups also to take a bite on this issue. Uh, well, uh, let's listen to the Shiraj boss himself um, uh, announce that uh, decision today to receive that petition from Tiger IPN. 
Thank you. Also, I can confirm and... that two days ago we received the commission received um, a complaint from Tiger IPI under the name of Anas Armia Anas, alleging conflict of interest of the finance minister Ken of Riata and the former Minister of State at the Finance Ministry, uh, Mr. Charles Edu Boahin, uh, in respect of companies that they have. And the allegations are that there is conflict of interest in terms of their official duties as public officers and the companies in which they have interests in, in terms of uh, government bonds. And so the case is going through the standard process of assessment. And in order to make sure that it meets the procedural requirements under the Commission's regulations, as well as whether it is really within the mandate of the Commission. Based on that, we will then decide what next steps to take whether to investigate or if we think it is not within, then uh, we will decline. Right. And this process you're talking about, usually how long does it take for you to make a decision? No, that one is more of a, an internal. It doesn't require investigation. It's more of the allegations made consistent with the laws of the country and the, 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 the laws against which those allegations are said to be affecting. Is, it, is there a matter that should concern the commission to investigate? Mm. And then procedurally, have they, has the complaint met all the standards of a complaint within the constitutional instrument regulating the complaints, the receiving of complaints, and the investigations of complaints. And of course, whether it's within the mandates of the commission, all these must be done before we can proceed with a decision on whether to investigate or not. Uh, well, hopes that this issue will be dealt with. Uh, it appears uh, it will be a long road. Uh, Adam, what do you think? Yeah, and I find it interesting. I mean, uh, hitherto we had thought that the Minister of Finance and his deputy had strongly emphasized that they had divorced themselves of all interest in companies that uh, would do business with government, especially com uh, companies that they were previously um, aligned to or had a role in. And so the fact that Tiger Eye is... Uh, uh, putting for a request of conflict of interest and saying it has to do with companies that deal with bonds. Uh, it will be interesting to see these facts. Um, interesting days coming up. Um, and yes, that's a totally different angle from what the special prosecutor or any other group will be looking at. So it is the way to go. I'm grateful, Adam Sennan, co-chair of uh, Citizens Movement Against uh, Corruption. That.